push, Mr. Potter. I'll push. I'll push. I'll push. I'll push. I'll push. And again, and again, push. Hey. No, breathe normally. Breathe normally. Breathe as we talk. That, that's right. Come on. All right. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. <laughs> Next time you want to photograph Billy Connolly, make sure you do it from a safe distance. Okay? <laughs> there is she. A swarm of bees. An Exaltation of locks, a murder of crows, oh, zebras. What you... Have you got anything for zebras, old chap? Yeah, not very much at the moment. Montague's got nothing on it. Let's have a look in through it. Oh, here, oh, here we go. Oh, there we are. Zebra, equine quadruped, a collection or gathering of which is known as a fart. <laughs> a fart? Are you sure? Well, you see for yourself. It didn't sound right, did you? A fart of zebras. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, Druid's got it. it. Must be all right. <laughs> now then, our old stick insects, that's going to take forever. Oh, it? no, no, I've done that one. Oh, well, well done. Here, that. Here, lad. Here we are. Stick insects. A gin and tonic of stick insects. <laughs> Of sticking to flamingos? Yes, an economic policy of flamingos. Economic policy? A gas bill of orangutans. <laughs> gas bill. A japati of alligators. Yeah. A leotard of rhinos. A leotard? An international flight path of peccaries. Peccaries? A masturbation Ooh. of black tailed godwits. <laughs> The leather bound Afghan belly dancing potty, potty blaster, blaster of, of emus. emus. Yes, <laughs> well, haven't we done well? Oh, well, I think we've got time for a couple of quick ones down at Stringfellows, don't you? Mm, yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Man that is born of a woman. Has but a short time to live. <laughs> he cometh up and is cut down like a flower. <laughs> he fleeth as it were a shadow and never continueth in one step. <laughs> For as much as it hath pleased Almighty God, to take unto himself the soul of this child here departed. We therefore commit his body to the ground. <laughs> earth to earth. Cockies. <laughs> ashes to ashes. <laughs> dust to dust. Sure and certain of resurrection to eternal life for our Lord Jesus Christ. To change the body of our lowest state, that it may be like unto his glorious body, according to the mighty work whereby he is able to subdue all things. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. <laughs> <clears throat> For the Lamb, which is in the midst of the throne, shall feed them, and shall lead them <clears throat> unto living fountains of waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Now unto the King, eternal, immortal, invisible,
The only wise god, the honor, ever and ever. Is there something wrong with your teeth? Mm -hmm. What's the problem then? These aren't my teeth. Okay, about you, George? That's fine, lovely, yeah. Well, you go. Did you have a look at the portfolio? I did. I had a look at the portfolio, and... Well, I'm obviously very interested. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be... a very, very interesting new department. Yeah. So, what, I mean, do you think we're going to find the money? Uh, any trouble? I don't think that the finance is any problem in itself. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just a little bit... Like to the menu, sir. Uh, no, I think Chef knows our order, Henry. Sorry, sir. Wine list, sir? Uh, yes. Um... <laughs> really? Uh, and an area of grid, um, that, is, that is actually riskier than some of the things we've been involved in in the past, if you know what I mean. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, I mean, I mean I've got a lot of, a mm. lot of confidence in, uh, <laughs> in, uh, in what Armitage has done. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I, um, I actually feel that, um, <laughs> I do actually feel that there are risks. And I, obviously, I want to discuss it with you, uh, with you, Georgia. That's why, that's why we've come out the mm. Thank you, Henry. <laughs> yeah. well, do you like the man, though? I mean, what do you think of that one? I've never really trusted him, quite honestly. Mm. But then that doesn't matter. I mean, we're going into business with him. I mean, we don't have to sleep with the rest of the people. <laughs> what do you actually think, then, George? I mean, what do you really feel about it? Well, I like it. I like it. I mean, I think it's a great idea. Mm. Ah, soup. <laughs> Mm. You see, I mean, what do you, I mean, what do you make of this whole <laughs> transferring their business over to New York? <laughs> I mean, well, I think it's a good idea, you know. But, I mean, that's basically it. They're not all that sort of people. Well, for one reason or another. Ah, uh, that looks lovely. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we can find some sort of interest ourselves. <laughs> real question. <laughs> real question. Real <laughs> real question. <laughs> Else, gentlemen. Uh, just the bill, I think, Henry. Just the bill. <clears throat> now, right. What well, we should do, frankly, we'll take another lunch. And, um, if we can't possibly get Richard Blake to come along, mm. well, I'd be interested from the accountant's point of view. Uh, excuse me, we're ready for you, but, uh, gentlemen. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, young man, I take a very, very dim view of this case. You and your like have given yourself over to a life of crime, robbing people of their last penny, ignoring their pleas for mercy and taking advantage of them when they were at their lowest ebb. And furthermore, I see not the slightest indication of remorse or personal concern at the fortunes you have amassed at the expense of people less fortunate yourselves. Yes, yes, all right. Can we get on with the case now? <laughs> right. Hi. Arthur. Yeah. Okay. Um, action's pretty straightforward. Yeah. 70 miles an hour, no more. No less. Something like that. Yeah. And it's just in a straight line, which right. is covered on well, yes. three angles. Yeah. So uh, that's it, really. Let's go. Uh, get the old Why, seat belt on. Start the car, and off we go. Come on, and, let's go. Uh, excuse me, where, where exactly do you want me to stop? I mean, is there a marker or something, you know? A marker? 
Yeah. No, you stop when you hit the wall. <laughs> which, which wall is ahead? There is only one wall, Arthur. OK, let's go. Fine. Right, excuse, excuse me. I, I, excuse me. I, um, what, what exactly is my motivation for this? Motivation? Yeah, because I, I am an actor, you see. Sure. I'm a stuntman, yeah. Um, your motivation, right? Yeah. Is to not miss the wall. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It's just that, you see, you want me to drive this car at 70 miles an hour like yeah. that cardboard wall, and I just think that's really a stuntman's job. It's not a cardboard wall. <laughs> it's a brick wall, obviously. Is it? Oh, shit. Karen, a bit of powder, love, is sweating up a bit. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm, sorry. I'm, just, I'm a bit nervous, you sure. see, because I've yeah. never done this before, and I rang my agent to me just to see yeah. whether he thought of me, but I don't sure. if, if I if I don't sure. this because I can't okay, that's fine. Point. Look, I... look, I'll tell you what. Uh, perhaps uh, 70 miles an hour, a little bit over the top. What do you think? Shall we, uh, why don't we make it, uh, 65? <laughs> and then I'll be all right, will I? Yeah, you'll be all right. <laughs> Until you hit the wall, obviously. <laughs> I couldn't just phone my agent, could I, do you well, think? Not now, Arthur. Stand by. OK, turn over. Road accident research film, crash one, take one. <laughs> Sixty-five miles an hour, was it? Yeah. A bit of a smile, Arthur, would you? <laughs> Action! Get up to speed, you think? Oh, he's molting, yeah, he's good, good speed. Rex, Rex, is that okay for you? Hey, good. Governor. Christ, he's still alive. <laughs> Could I try that again, please? I'm not <laughs> <man. laughs> Okay, now I think the injection should be working. I'm a little poor. Now, don't worry about a thing. It might hurt a little bit. If you feel any pain, just give me a yell. Okay? <laughs> That's the idea here. Ah, ah, yeah. Um, this rescue report, Philip, so what happened? It was a routine recce flight, sir, east of the Cape, about 5,000 feet. I throttles down for a starboard sweep and a whole paraphernalia dies on me, everything. The engines, hydros, radio, the lot. So you landed on the ice floe? It was a bit hairy, sir. Well, you're a good pilot, Phillips. Thanks very much, sir. You're also a very fortunate pilot. Sir? Well, 58 days on an ice floe, no food. It's a miracle you didn't starve to death. I didn't think about food, sir. Survival was all that mattered. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me, Phillips. Where's Henderson? <laughs> Henderson, sir. It's your co-pilot, Henderson. Oh, Henderson. Yes, Henderson. Yeah. Yeah, he, he ejected, sir. He ejected over the sea. I saw him go under, and I, nev I never saw him again, sir. Yeah, but you did find his ejector seat and fit it back in the aircraft, then? <laughs> I beg your pardon? Well, both ejector seats are in the aircraft. Oh, yes, that's I, I managed to recover the ejector seat. Yes. So, so, let me get this straight. In sub-zero temperatures and half starving to death, you yeah. swim out, you dive down, you pick up a 200-weight ejector seat, and you fit it back in the aircraft. It's what Henderson would have wanted, sir. <laughs> You've eaten him, haven't you? <laughs> e eaten Henderson, sir? I wouldn't eat Henderson. Henderson was my best meat. Mate! <laughs> my, 
Sir, I didn't think anything happened. I, I was starving to death. I... Look, Philip, starving men have been rescued before, and the first thing they usually ask for is food. Not, have you got a couple of Visadol tablets on I, I was ranting. You were burping, Phillips. I didn't, I didn't eat Henderson, sir, I you swear. Didn't, you didn't. You didn't. So how, how do you account for the fact that, that gnawed bones were found around the aircraft? A penguin. A penguin. <laughs> I called a penguin, sir. I see. Well, look, I've been serving in the Falklands for 18 months, and in all that time, not once, no, not ever, have I seen a penguin with 42-inch hips. <laughs> do you take me for a fool, Phillips? No, sir. Because I'm not. Do you recognise that? <laughs> yes, sir. Well? It's the skull of a penguin, sir. <laughs> it's the skull of a co-pilot. Positively and absolutely identified as Henderson. Come on, Phillips, admit it. You at him. Oh, sir, one of us had to eat the other or we both have perished. Go on. It was decided that it would be best all, all round if if I ate him, sir. Oh, my God. How does anyone make a decision like that? Well, he was a vegetarian. <laughs> Officer. Have you been drinking, sir? No, I haven't, actually. Would you mind getting out of the car, please? You're sure you haven't been drinking? Yes, I'm absolutely positive. Will you drive the chief constable home? He's as pissed as a fart. <laughs> on our pavements by spraying it gold. <laughs> Another idea from seeing Rod Stewart in concert. <laughs> Sir Giles. Chris Searle. Hello, Chris. So, how long does it take to become a leading transplant surgeon? <laughs> uh, well, Chris, about uh, 10 years of medical school, 15 years postgraduate research, uh, probably 20 years training in a teaching hospital, and oh, about 10 years specialization. <laughs> and I've got just eight days. <laughs> oh well, in for a penny. <laughs> Monday morning, 10 o'clock, and my first meeting with the parents of the boy whose heart transplant I'm going to perform. <laughs> Tell me, how did you raise the money for your son's operation? Well, we, we remortgaged our house, and my sister and my uncle and my two brothers in, in California, they, they cashed in their life insurance. That's right. And half the village has sold itself to property speculators to start an appeal. So you're quite keen for the operation to be a success. <laughs> Yeah. So, time to get the show on the road, then. Now, Chris, let's find out what you know about the human body, shall we? Do you know where the heart is, for example? There? Well, oh, you're not a million miles away, Chris. It's actually just up there, you see? Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> well, here we are. My first stab at assisting in an operation. I've only been here three hours. But I've already learned there's definitely more to heart transplant surgery than meets the eye. You don't just bung it in. There's all sorts of blood vessels and arteries and fiddly things like that to join up. Replacement heart, Chris. <laughs> now, is this the one to go in or the one that's just come out? <laughs> Well, Chris, D-Day is drawing near. It certainly is. Yes, and we've got to find a replacement heart for young Timothy. Oh, yes. Now, what sort of heart are we after? 
Well, well, it's not going to be easy, is it? Because no. the donor has to be the same age, same blood group, same everything. Good luck. <laughs> Two hours to go, and I still haven't found a donor. It's a dash. <laughs> Well, it looks like my lucky day, after all. <laughs> so the big moment has finally come. Oh, good luck, Chris. <laughs> Have you got the heart? attempts to involve yourself in the intricate and complex medical treatment of that young boy's serious condition were an unmitigated disaster. I had been warned that I might end up in front of a medical tribunal, and sure enough, they threw the book at me. I sentence you to 15 years imprisonment. <laughs> so join me in at the deep end in two weeks' time to find out how I get on in my attempt to break out of Parker's. <laughs> In which case, gentlemen, how can members of Parliament possibly justify to anyone uh, awarding themselves a pay rise that is three times in excess of the current rate of inflation? Well, I don't think we have to justify it to anyone, do we? Do, do we have to justify it to anyone? I don't, I don't think, think so. <laughs> Ah, Charles. <laughs> Glad you could make it. Sit down. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not going to beat about the bush, Charles. No, sir. No. I've had my eye on you, Charles. I've been watching you for some time, and I like what I see. Very flattered. <laughs> you know, there comes a time in every young executive's life, Charles, when he has to move into the rough and tumble, start playing with the big boys. <laughs> you, uh, you understand what I'm saying? Well, I, yes, I think... <laughs> I, I think so, Sir Frederick, yes. <laughs> Charles, I'm offering to get into bed with you. <laughs> Well, well, thank you very much. <laughs> but uh, one thing is vital. I think we must start with a clean sheet. <laughs> well, so do I. <laughs> Let's just put it like this, shall we? Once the bloom goes up... Well... Need I say more, Charles? <laughs> Just, just a little more might be quite useful. Look, count on, Charles. I mean, the whole thing's very sexy, agree? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Now, I know for a fact that you can't put much up front. Well, I can't have any complaints. <clears throat> uh, but I'm not asking you to expose yourself, Charles. Oh, good. I have Thanks. no intention of exposing myself. Thank God for that. <laughs> Charles, I just want to suck it and see. <laughs> Necessary, sir. I might as well tell you, Charles. I want you in harness as quickly as possible. <laughs> on the floor or on the board, it's up to you. Well, that's, that's jolly decent of you, isn't it? <laughs> Charles, if we move quickly and keep our heads down, I think we can pull this thing off. <laughs> Any questions? Well, no, 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 there is only one thing, sir. Mm -hmm. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Actually, um, 
Tonight is, is in fact rather a special night for us, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, tonight is an anniversary. It's actually ten years to the day that uh, Smudger and I first worked together. <laughs> ten <laughs> terrific years. <laughs> And uh, we find it absolutely incredible we should be sitting here. A whole decade, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Sorry. What? Sorry. Are you actually gonna do that? What, get off my stool, you mean? No, I mean all all this. What, 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 <laughs> what all this what? what you... Well, all this groping thing. Groping. <laughs> Groping. I'm not... I mean, are you going to fondle me with your big sweaty paws <laughs> in a filthy and lascivious manner? Hey, come on, loosen up, no, please! <laughs> Leave it, could just get back to your own... Stop invading my space, will you? What is wrong? Do you know, I don't believe... I've never noticed this before. You really, you really don't like me touching you, do you? Do you? No, don't. No, you, you don't. don't. <laughs> It's because you're Welsh, isn't it? Oh, don't be ridiculous! <laughs> well, sir, the Welsh are a very tactile nation. I just... Well, what, what, what is it then? What, I mean, what, what is it? I mean, what, what, you just... What, you don't like touching other men? No, no, it's not that. Well, no, what is it then? I just don't like touching you. Uh, <laughs> do you know... Just like, your whole life has been ruined by public school. Did oh, you know that? It has. Se sex to go. you, sex no. to you means being chased around the dormitory by the older boys. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> being, being beaten across the bare buttocks by a prefect with a leather-bound copy of Winnie the Pooh. That's what that's your choice. <laughs> Don't try and turn me on when I'm on the telly, Mel. <laughs> Griff, this is an outdated hang-up. We just we're talking about touching someone in a friendly way. I mean, there's no social stigma attached to it. Like French Frenchmen touch each other all the time. Yeah, I'm sure they do. Yeah. <laughs> Italian men hold hands. Well, why don't you work with Victor Spinetti then? <laughs> you, you are a positive knot of neuroses. I am not a knot of neuroses. Okay. Hold my hand. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Hold my hand. <laughs> come on, hold my hand. If it keeps you happy. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> there. That's not so bad, is it? It's friendly. It's natural. Now. <laughs> there's, there's nothing sexual about touching with. Well, I hope not. <laughs> Actually, it's a bit like kissing. <laughs> There's nothing sexual about kissing. No, male, male kissing has no sexual connotation whatsoever. It's ridiculous, of course no. it does. No, no. <laughs> actually, in, in primitive times, it, it, it actually started out as a way of passing food, you know, berries and the like, from one mouth to another after being carried long distances. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And it's the same with, with French kissing. Is it? Mm. <laughs> That was just a way of that was just a way of finding out what your partner had had for lunch. I see. <laughs> there's 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 no, there's nothing sexual about it at all. No. no. Shall I show you? No. <laughs> Come on. Mm. You have got to open up, Griff. Mm. Open up.
you bored? 